Hey everyone, it's Triple Mango Threat, and today we're talking about the decks that everyone should build at least one time, so let's jump right into it. Starting with Halden and Paco, if you love casting everybody's non-creature spells, this is a great deck for you to try. It's really important that we have both of our commanders on the battlefield because we need both of them to make this deck work. So let's read our partner commanders. First we have Halden Avid Arcanist for 2 and a blue, it's a 1-4 human wizard. You may play non-creature cards from exile with fetch counters on them if you exiled them. And you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. And then we have Paco for 3 red and green, it's a 3-3 elemental hound and it's partnered with Halden. It has haste and whenever it attacks we're going to exile the top card of each player's library. We're going to put a fetch counter on them and then we're going to put a plus one plus one counter on Paco for each non-creature card exiled this way. So as you can see, See, we can't cast those spells we get with Paco if we don't have Halden out, so again, we need both of our commanders to make this work. Now, some of the cards that are actually going to protect our commander are cards like Alpha Authority, Eel Umbra, and Spider Umbra. These are enchantments and they're non-creature spells, so we're going to be able to cast them with Halden and Paco's ability, which is also really nice. But what's important is that these cards are going to help protect our commander. So for example, Alpha Authority is going to give our commander Hexproof, and what's really nice, it can't be blocked by more than one creature. So if we have this card on Paco, it's going to deal a lot of damage, and if we can give it Trample, even better. Eel Umbra has Flash, it's going to give our creature plus one plus one, and it has totem armor, which means if our creature would be destroyed, it's actually going to destroy Elambra instead. So if they have a board wipe or destroy target creature, they're going to have to get rid of our enchantment first. And the same with Spider Umbra, except it's going to give our creature plus one plus one and it has reach now. Speaking of trample, we have cards like Satessan Training and Vow of Wilderness. This is going to give Paco trample, and so we're going to have a lot of commander damage hitting our opponents. There are benefits to casting non creature spells with cards like Firebrand Archer and Sahili Sublime Artificer. We can deal one damage to each opponent opponent, and we can make 1-1 one, one servos. We can also manipulate the top card of our opponent's library with cards like Vanishment, Temporal Spring, and Expel from Orozka. We can choose to put non-creature permanents on top of our opponent's library, and then we can later attack with Paco, we're going to exile those cards with fetch counters, and we can cast them with Halden. And the last card I really want to mention is Soulbright Flamekin for 1 and a red, it's a 2-1 Elemental Shaman. This is not a non-creature spell, but wait for this ability. We can pay 2 and target creature gains trample until end of turn, so this can be Paco. And if this is the third time this ability has resolved this turn, you may add 8 red mana to your mana pool. So we literally pay 6 to get 8, and what's really sweet is that that 8 red mana can cast our non-creature spells that are exiled. Because remember, Halden makes it where we can spend mana as though it were any color to cast those non-creature spells exiled with Paco. So again, if you love playing non-creature spells or even your opponent's non-creature spells, this is a fun one and I really recommend it. Next, let's talk about Shirai, Shizo's caretaker. For four and a black, we have a 2-2 spirit. Whenever a creature with power one or less is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may return that card to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step, if Shirai, Shizo's caretaker, is still on the battlefield. This deck also really cares about its commander. If we lose the commander, the rest of the deck isn't going to function as well. Well, so we need cards like Blessing of the Leeches, Dark Privilege, Mirror Shield, and Soul Channeling. By protecting our commander, we're going to get a lot more value from this deck. And with Blessing of the Leeches, it may seem like a downside that every upkeep we're losing one life, but for zero mana, we can regenerate Enchanted Creature. And we can also play this anytime we can play an instant, so this enchantment has flash. Dark Privilege is actually a really cool one. It has a sack outlet on it, and we can regenerate the enchanted creature, which would be our commander. So if we don't have a sack outlet out at the time, this is a great one to use. Mirror Shield is another good one. It's actually an underrated card that we can use for protecting our commander. It's going to give our commander hexproof and also death touch, but I don't really care about that. The most important thing is that our commander is going to have hexproof, so that means we can still target our commander, but our opponents can no longer target Shirai. And last, we have Soul Channeling. You can pay two life to regenerate our commander, which is really sweet. We don't have to lose that one life every upkeep like Blessing of the Leeches. We can just pay two whenever we need to regenerate our commander. Now, moving on to the sack outlets, we have cards like Blood Throne, Vampire, Carrion Feeder, and Viscera Seer. What's really nice is that these have no cost, we just have to sacrifice the creature, we don't have to pay any additional mana to make this happen. And with Viscera Seer, we get to scry one when we sacrifice a creature, so we get to benefit from our commander, and also scrying one's going to help us determine if we actually want that card on top of our library. We can put it on the bottom of our library, and if we do that a couple of times, it's like we've actually drawn a card. So if we really need a land, we can keep scrying till we get one. And last I want to talk about, whenever our creatures do die, they're going to be dealing damage to our opponents, with cards like Blood Artist, Falconrath Noble, Vindictive Vampire, and Zulaport Cutthroat. So over time, this is going to be a lot of damage, and what's really sweet about our commander is this is at every end step, so even our opponents 
end step as well. So what could be four damage on our turn could be four damage on each player's turn. So this is 16 damage within one turn. This is insane and really powerful and I love Shirai. I really recommend it if you love these tricky grave interactions and this is going to happen every end step so there's a lot of value and a lot of small creatures to sacrifice. Next let's talk about Audric Lunark Marshall. For three and a white we have a 3-3 human soldier. At the beginning of each combat, creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn if a creature you control has first strike. The same is true for flying, death touch, double strike, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, reach, skulk, trample, and vigilance. So this is a really cool commander. It really cares about key words and specifically those I mentioned. So we can make all of our creatures indestructible just by casting cards like Adanto Vanguard and Darksteel Mirror. If we pay for life, Adanto Vanguard can gain indestructible until end of turn, which is actually going to make all of our creatures gain indestructible just by paying for life which is really nice. We can give all of our creatures vigilance with cards like Baird Stewer of Argive, Danitha, Capuchin Paragon, Elite Inquisitor, and Loyal Unicorn. Loyal Unicorn is actually really good besides giving our creatures vigilance. It has this ability called Lieutenant where at the beginning of combat on our turn if we control our commander which is really likely in this deck we're going to prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to creatures we control this turn. Other creatures you control gain vigilance until end of turn which doesn't matter but no combat damage it's going to hurt our creatures, which is amazing. We're going to give all of our creatures lifelink with cards like Hazda Marshall, Healer's Hawk, and Hopeful Eidolon. For one white mana, we can give all of our creatures lifelink, and this is really powerful. We can give our creatures first strike with cards like Battlefield Raptor and Precinct Captain. And last, and in my opinion, the most important is we can give our creatures Trample and Haste. We can do this with cards like Chariot of Victory, Haunted Cloak, and Sword of Vengeance. Now, why I think these are the most important keywords is because we can make a bunch of tokens with cards like Increasing Devotion, Nomad's Assembly, and White Sun Zenith. Giving all of these tokens haste is really powerful and we're going to be dealing a lot of damage, especially when we have cards that can give our tokens double strike. We can do this with Adorn Pouncer, Avon Sunstriker, and Fencing Ace. So if you like to have a lot of creatures and applying all of your keywords to every creature, this is the deck for you. Next, let's talk about Hirobi Death's Whale for two black black. It's a 4-4 spirit with flying. Whenever a creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, destroy destroy that creature. So there's a lot of silly things we can do with this deck. For one black, we can be destroying any creature as long as they do not have indestructible. So we can destroy creatures with cards like Mogus's Favor. This is an enchantment, but whenever you enchant a creature, you're targeting that creature. So for one black, we can destroy a creature with this enchantment. Aphotic Wisps, Fungal Infection, Blade Brand, and Lost Hope. We're targeting creatures. No matter what the effect is, we're going to be able to destroy them. And we can even draw cards with cards like Aphotic Wisps and Blade Brand, which is going to be nice because we're ditching a card to destroy a creature. We might as well be able to refill our hand and that's really going to help us. A silly card is Cauldron of Souls. It's five mana and it's an artifact. We can tap it to choose any number of target creatures. Each of those creatures gain persist until end of turn. That doesn't matter. As soon as we target those creatures, they're all going to be destroyed. So this is literally a board wipe just by tapping this artifact. This is insane. And even more silly stuff. We can make it where our opponent's creatures no longer have hexproof. Yeah, I said that. Glaring Spotlight for one mana. It's an artifact. Creatures your opponent's control with hexproof can be the targets of spell spells and abilities you control as though they didn't have hexproof and we can pay three and sack it to make it where our creatures gain hexproof until end of turn and they're unblockable but most likely we're just going to be keeping this on the battlefield. This is insane. Now the downside of our commander is that it also applies to our commander. So if somebody targets our commander, our commander will be destroyed. But there is one card I found that can actually get around this because we can't enchant our commander. We can't equip an equipment to our commander because it's going to be destroyed because it's targeting. We have the card Whale of the Nim. It's for two and a black. Choose one. Regenerate each creature you control or Whale of the Nim deals one damage to each creature and player. And it has entwined for one black. But the thing I want to focus on is that it regenerates each creature. This does not target any of our stuff. So this is the one card I found that can actually help our commander and it's not targeting it at all. We're going to be drawing a lot of cards with Harvester of the Souls for four black black. We have a 5-5 five five demon with death touch. Whenever a non-token creature dies, you may draw a card. This means any non-token creature that we control, our opponents control. This is an amazing 
amazing card in this deck, especially for one black mana. We're destroying our opponent's creature. We get to draw a card for one black mana, or if we're using Cauldron of Souls, if we destroy five of our opponent's creatures, we're drawing five cards just by tapping Cauldron of Souls. This gets really dumb really quick. So if you like this weird way of destroying your opponent's creatures, I really recommend this deck. Now, if you want to get your creatures back from your graveyard, let's talk about Arami of the Dead Tide. For one blue and a black, we have a 1-4 Merfolk Wizard. We can tap Arami and exile cards from our graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have. Target creature card in your graveyard gains Encore until end of turn. The Encore cost is equal to its mana cost. So that means we're going to exile the creature card, pay its mana cost, and for each opponent we're going to create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn if able. They gain haste, then we're going to sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. Activate this only as a sorcery. So when we have three opponents, this can get really nutty. Imagine three sepulchral primordials. When it enters the battlefield, for each opponent we can grab up to one target creature from their graveyard and put it on the battlefield under our control. So with three of these, that means three creatures from our opponent's graveyard each. And also Massacre Worm. When it enters the battlefield, normally it's going to give each creature our opponent controls minus two minus two until end of turn, and whenever that creature an opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. Well, already that's a great card, but if we have three copies, that means each opponent's creatures get negative six, negative six until end of turn, which already is insane. Then, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, they're going to lose six life. This is going to do a lot of work, and this is an amazing board wipe. But we can't get those amazing cards unless we have ways to mill ourselves. So let's talk about Codex Shredder, Deranged Assistant, Milliken, and Perpetual Timepiece. We can tap these cards and mill up to two cards with Perpetual Timepiece, which is really nice. And these are all two or less mana. So in the early game, we can start filling our graveyard with a lot of creatures and a lot of cards we're going to have to exile anyways to be able to have those cards on our battlefield again. So most of our effective creatures either have an ETB or a dies trigger. So with Altar of Dementia, our creature's going to die anyways, so we can sacrifice it and we can start milling ourselves or even our opponents equal to that creature's power. And there's actually a couple ways we can start keeping the tokens that we make with our commander. We have Sundial of the Infinite and Teferi's Veil. So with Sundial of the Infinite, we can pay one and tap it to end the turn. We can only activate it on our turn. That's fine. But by ending the turn before our end step, we do not have to sacrifice our creatures anymore. And we're just going to keep all the tokens that we made. And with Teferi's Veil, this is all about our creatures phasing out. Our creatures are going to have to attack anyways because they have haste. But when they phase out, they no longer exist. So they're not going to have to be sacrificed at our end step. But you name it, any creature with a crazy ETB or a dice trigger can be added to this deck as long as it's blue or black, or even colorless. So just to name a few, Agent of Treachery, Grave Titan, or Vindictive Lich. These are all crazy, and if you love some graveyard shenanigans and getting a lot of value off of your creatures, this is the deck I have to recommend to you. Next, let's talk about the best bunny rabbit you're ever going to meet, and that's Quain Itinerant Meddler for a white and a blue. It's a 1-3 rabbit wizard. You can tap Quain, and each player may draw a card. Then each player who drew a card this way gains one life. The important thing is that it says each player may draw a card, so we can't force them to draw cards, but we get a lot of benefit if they do with cards like Old Breacher and Smothering Tithe. There's a lot of ways to untap our commander and keep having a lot of players draw cards. So Old Breacher, if an opponent would draw a card except their first one they draw in each of their draw steps, instead you create a treasure token. And Smothering Tithe says whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two mana. If the player doesn't, we're going to create a treasure token. We can have them drawing a lot of cards with Dictative Crucifix, Kami of the Crescent Moon, and Temple Bell. Each turn they're going to be drawing an additional card, so that means more treasure tokens if they decide to draw, or again, if we're forcing them to draw with these cards. Now, over time, we're going to seem like a threat because our opponents are going to be drawing a lot of cards. We may seem like a hug deck at first, but when I build Quain, I want to make it a secret mill deck, so we have cards that can protect us like Windborn Muse, Ghostly Prison, and Propaganda. This means our opponents are going to have to pay mana for each creature when they attack us. Now remember that we actually gain a life when we draw a card from Quain. Nobody really cares about that, but it does matter if we want to win the game, so we can have a win con like Felidar Sovereign at the beginning of your upkeep. If you have 40 or more life, you win the game. So even if our opponents hit us for a little bit, we keep gaining back that one life when we tap Quain. It's really likely we're going to win the game with cards like Felidar Sovereign. Or we have Azor's Elocutors at the beginning of your upkeep, put a filibuster counter on Azor's Elocutors. Then if Azor Elocutors has five or more filibuster counters on it, you win the game. Whenever a source deals damage to you, remove a filibuster counter from Azor's Elocutors. So if we have cards like Ghostly Prison and Propaganda, it's really likely we can win with Azor's Elocutors. So if you love to draw cards, make it where your opponents can't hit you and you're secretly a mill deck, 
I really recommend this one. Next, let's talk about Hamza, Guardian of Arash. And for green and a white, it's a 5-5 Elephant Warrior. This spell costs one less for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. It also has creatures you cast cost one less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. So this commander is going to make itself and every other creature in our deck a lot cheaper just by having our creatures with counters on them. So Endless One and Ugin's Conjurer are really easy to have counters on them because we can pay X and then put that many counters on those creatures. So already for one mana, our creatures are going to start costing one less. When our creatures enter the battlefield, they can enter with counters with cards like Renata, Call to the Hunt, and Good Fortune Unicorn. We have some really good card draw with cards like Primordial Sage and Soul of the Harvest. Whenever we cast or whenever our creatures enter the battlefield, we're going to be drawing cards. And remember, our creatures are going to be however many colorless less equal to the number of creatures we have with plus one plus one counters on them. And it doesn't matter how many plus one plus one counters they have as long as they have at least one. One. Then we're going to get that discount from our commander. So we could end up paying two green for either one of these cards. Mindless Automaton is another great card that's going to help us draw even more cards. It's going to enter the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. And we can remove two plus one plus one counters from it to draw a card. Well, if we have out Renata, Call to the Hunt, or Good Fortune Unicorn, it's already going to enter with another plus one plus one counter. Or we also have cards like Retreat to Kazandu and Felidar Retreat. Whenever a land enters our battlefield, we can choose to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, or we can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control with Felidar Retreat. Or we have Citadel Siege. When it enters the battlefield, we can choose cons or dragons. If we choose cons, at the beginning of combat on our turn, we can put two plus one plus one counters on target creature we control. So that means each turn, we can put those counters on Mindless Automaton, and we can then remove them to draw a card. So if you love plus one plus one counters and making all of your creatures cost less for those plus one plus one counters, you're going to love this deck. The last deck we're going to be talking about is M.O.T. Celebrant of Bounty. For three green and blue, we have a 3-1 Naga Druid. It has Cascade, which means whenever we cast that spell, we're going to exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a non-land card that costs less. We can cast it without paying its mana cost, and we're going to put the exile cards on the bottom of our library in a random order. And spells you cast with converted mana cost six or greater have Cascade. So when we cast our commander or any huge spell with CMC six or greater, we're going to be able to Cascade a lot. We have Woodland Bellower. It costs six mana. When it enters the battlefield, we can search for a non-legendary green creature with converted converted mana cost three or less and put it onto the battlefield. So when we cast this, we get a cascade trigger and we get the creature with CMC three or less. So we can grab Fierce Empath, which means we can search for a creature card with CMC six or greater and put it into our hand. And we can find even more creatures with stuff like that. It's, it's insane. Everything flows together. So this loves to cast huge spells. And we can also protect our huge spells with cards like Thrix the Sudden Storm. Spells you cast when converted mana cost five or greater cost one less to cast and can't be countered. This is a great thing to have in the deck because it's really disappointing whenever we cascade into something huge and then someone counters it. Well, they can no longer do that if it's 5 CMC or greater. Apex Devastator is probably my favorite card in the deck for 8 green green. It's a 10-10 Chimera Hydra. It has Cascade, 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 Cascade. Now imagine having that card and you get to Cascade another time because of our commander. We get to Cascade five times for 10 mana. That is insane. Amanatu's Augury for six blue blue. It's a sorcery. We can exile the top eight cards of our library. We can put a land from among them onto the battlefield and until end of turn for each non-land card type, you may cast a card of that type among the exiled cards without paying its mana cost. So we get a lot more free spells. This is an eight CMC spell. We can cast Cascade off of it, there's just so much value in this deck. Avenger of Zendikar for 7 CMC. When it enters the battlefield, we're going to create 0-1 green plant creature tokens for each land we control. And it has landfall. Whenever a land enters our battlefield, we can put a plus one plus one counter on each plant creature we control. This is another great card in the deck because we're making so many creatures equal to our lands that we have, and then we can also buff those creatures up by playing a land. And we can also win the game with cards like Pathbreaker Ibex. When it attacks, creatures you control gain trample and plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Well, if we have Avenger of Zendikar and it's a 5-5, those plant creature tokens are going to get plus 5, plus 5, and trample. We're going to be doing a lot of damage. And again, if you love the Cascade, this is a great deck for you to play. 
If you'd like to check out any of these decks I mentioned in this video, they will all be available in the description below. And if you decide you want a deck, I want to say thank you for using the links when purchasing your decks. It really helps out the channel at no additional cost to you. Thank you all so much for watching. This is a bit of a longer episode than usual, but if you plan on building any of these decks, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more of these types of videos, be sure to subscribe for more Mango content. I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, peace.